Woolworths Chairman Simon Sussman and Chief Executive of Sunlam Johan van Sale have joined what is now a growing chorus of business leaders concerned about populist legislation being imposed on commerce in South Africa. Let's start off with uh, an interview that Samantha um, Loring had yesterday with Johan van Sale of Sunlam. Just the relevant clip. I think uh, I, I wouldn't go as far to say as we need a fresh economic philosophy. I mean, a lot of what's been said is actually part of our national development plan, which has been accepted and, and so forth. I think what we have to do is uh, to rally behind that plan, and uh, which um, encompass and I think contain a lot on the labor rigidity and the issues that we've spoken of and so forth. Certainly it's problematic. But I think there's no, no one silver bullet. I think we have to tackle the issues on a number of fronts. And I think, you know, the sort of broad plan and direction has been set. I, I would much rather like us to see moving on it, you know, uh, come with a few projects and, and, and start driving it. Woolworths Chairman Simon Sisman is no shrinking violet either. In his annual report, or his letter to shareholders in the annual report that has just been released, Sisman had a full go at some of the issues that he feels are of concern. He was interviewed by us last night. Here's what he had to say. I think we have such a wonderful economy and we've made, if you look back over 10 years, incredible strides. Um, there's, the research we've done, there's an enormous drop in poverty. Uh, we've seen the growth in the middle classes uh, and it's just been fantastic. It's been the South African economic miracle. The issue that we're facing is that we're beginning to stifle that miracle and we're stifling it unnecessarily. And I think at the heart of that lies this uh, whole plethora of restricted labor practices, um, which are having the effect of keeping people out of work. It's crazy. And that's why I'm saying I think it's absolutely right that we have a fresh debate and look at a fresh economic philosophy for the country. We can grow. We can create jobs. We can create new consumers but we need to talk about it. We're well, staying on the topic of business leaders speaking out against government. Guy Lundy, who's a strategist and futurist, joins us to discuss this burning issue. Good to have you here in the Johannesburg studio, Guy. It is a new approach. We know in the past that business leaders uh, were shrinking violets. Maybe, um, as we were discussing, Gugu and I yesterday, they were more like Maltese poodles. They yap and weed at home, but they weren't like uh, showing any teeth in public. This seems to be a new approach. Well, I think that what, thanks for having me, Alec, and thanks, Gugu. I think what has happened is that over time, business people have started to realize that without speaking out, things are going to happen that don't benefit business. Uh, traditionally, over the last 10, 15 years, there's been quite an anti-reaction to business people speaking their minds. I think that uh, dates back to the era when Thabo Mbeki was president. And a number of people have been taken to task, Michael Jordan, uh, and various others because of their views about where things are going in South Africa. Uh, and I think that it's time that business people stood up and started speaking, but speaking in a way that is not antagonistic, uh, angry, uh, shouting from the rooftops. Uh, we need a dialogue. We need much better dialogue than we've had to date. Just with regard to that dialogue, what do you make of organizations like NEDLAC, which Kunrad uh, Besaidenhout earlier this week said that it's a broken organization. Uh, do, are these organizations fulfilling their functions uh, as well as their mandates? If I look at an organization like NEDLAC, I would agree with the point that it's a broken organization. It's outdated. It was set up 15, 20 years ago. Uh, and I think that we need something new. It's, it's become a... It's become a, a place where people go to fight with each other, and I don't think that uh, constructive decisions come out of NEDLAC. So what do you propose then? You say we need something new. What needs to change? What, what needs to take place there? Well, I think that people at the highest levels need to sit together and they need to start having a conversation around how do we turn this economy into the growth that it has the potential to have. So we need to start looking at countries uh, north of us, like Rwanda, Mauritius, and various others that have been doing some amazing things for a long period of time. We also need to, I agree with Simon Sisman, take a very serious stand that we all agree on the NDP and we're now going to move forward on it. Those that, those that are not on the bus are going to get left behind by the bus. Yeah, NEDLAC is an uh, institution that isn't fulfilling the role with which it was originally established for and uh, surely something better has to be there. But this new approach, this approach of business leaders now feeling emboldened enough 
to write the way that Sussman did in his annual report, to speak out like Johan von Sales done. And there are, they are the, the tip of the iceberg. Herman Mashaba is another one who has been very vocal on these issues. <laughs> What's causing that? Is, 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 uh, is there a, maybe a, a new wave or a new spirit saying from the government side, talk to us? There are some people within government that are starting to come out and be a lot more vocal about the need to talk. Trevor Manuel is the obvious example of that. Um, but I think it is also coming from businesses side where business people are realizing that if they don't, a lot of things are going to happen that they have no influence over. And uh, that's, that's something that has changed. We've had isolated voices like Rural Causa and various others in the past uh, who haven't gone down very well because they've been isolated, they've been standing alone. And I think that business leaders have started to realize that we all need to speak out and we need to stand together on what we know needs to be done because the, the basics are in place. We've got a very uh, solid foundation to our economy. We've got the NDP that's been worked on and put together. Now we need to stand together and make sure that that actually moves forward from there. In that clip that we heard from uh, Simon Sussman, he mentioned something very interesting. He described the growth in the South African middle class and, and the growth in economic development as something of a miracle and mentions that we are stifling this miracle. Uh, and it almost seems as though there's, he feels as though his efforts, as well as those of the private sector, have not been appreciated by the government. Well, I think that the frustration comes from the fact that we have moved tremendously forward over the last 20 years. That you could describe it as a miracle. I, I think that miracles are things that happen without any, uh, <laughs> no, no, any no, no, control. Come on. He was just being nice to start with. He was, he, was, <laughs> he was saying, okay, this is the good news, but by the way, this is the bad news. So yeah. it's, it's the way you get it across. But I would, I would agree with the point that we have done tremendous things. We have made tremendous strides, um, I, but we've worked hard to get to where we are. And I think that the frustration is that, we, that, that the government is very often not recognizing how far we've come uh, and are wanting to force through legislation to make us go further faster. Uh, and the reality is that if we took a step back and we said, OK, what do we need to do to keep this momentum going and to make it happen uh, in such a way that it impacts on a larger group of people, that would be a lot more effective in my mind by liberal, liberalizing the, the, the legislative environment rather than trying to use a sledgehammer to force things through much yeah, more aggressively. But the problem was business abdicated its responsibility at a critical time. So we have labor legislation today that is insane for a developing country. How do you roll all of that back? Hmm. That is going to be tough and that's why we need to have a new dialogue. We need to have business, labor, government sitting down and seeing past the politics and past the ideology and starting to look at sense. So it is going to be tough. There's no doubt that we've, we've created a situation where we've tied ourselves in knots and we are now stifling the momentum that we've created. But we need to have all of those parties sitting down at the highest level, not sending uh, representatives to go and fight with each other at NEDLAC and start to have a serious strategic discussion around how do we make the NDP work? How do we get it implemented? And the impact that this might have on foreign direct investment, well, depending on how, which way the discussions go, either positive or negative, Alec? Mm. Uh, yeah, I, think, I think that if we get our act together, this country is going to go crazy. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. Money will flood in here at a, in a tsunami type proportion, but we just keep shooting ourselves in the foot. Yeah. I, I, I used the expression the other day that we tend to bumble along. Uh, we, we, we do great things and then we we stumble a bit and then we do a couple more great things. What we need to do is to be much more focused about how we're going to drive, uh, drive in a certain direction and how we're going to do that together. Um, so <coughs> yes, we, we do need to get much more focused on how we drive the economy rather than how we sort out the politics, which is what many of us spend much of our time focusing on.